Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. <laughs> Would you like that? Hmm? Alright, look, I brought you two, so let's start on one. Go ahead. Or is that too hot for your little lips there? Hot lips. Hmm. Hmm. This is a Tercy Clopello. I think it's Spanish for velvet. Mm. Also known as Bothrop's Asper. As Steve Austin said, the ultimate pit viper. These things get very large and are very fast and very, very unpredictable. Uh, they can turn back on themselves after racing at high speed in one direction and be back on you and before you have time to react. Well, come on. Don't be a pain in the butt. Yes, I'm talking about you. Come on. They can grow six to eight feet long, have long fangs, and very foul venom. These will rot your leg off if you get tagged. What? Don't look at me like that. I hate to be the, uh, uh, the person of attention with these guys. Yeah. Got the hiccups? Yeah. Maybe I got some of my chili, uh, chilies from uh, dinner on the mouse, and it's like, whoa. I'm the one who's supposed to be hot, not the mouse. Well, there you go. It was, uh, it was a little slow. I've been only feeding her one pink a week, which I know is a small amount for her, but I'm not trying to get her to grow too big too fast. Because she may not be as fat as Miss Mooj and I, but she will be much longer. There you go, I even got the substrate off. Well, let's let her suck that down a little more and let's move to the male. He's a little bit more subdued. Roar! No, you're just a little love tap today, huh? Normally these guys are really excited about feeding, but apparently not today. Of course, you know, I just introduce the, the food item and, and just let them sort of uh, eat it at their leisure. But today we've got the camera rolling in hopes to get some footage of them. Ah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, that's more like it. There. I think if there's a, 
a range of temperature that they get really excited about. If you're high, too hot, they're like, ah, I don't eat anything that's this, that's this hot. If it's too cold, it's like, eh, I hardly even care. Yep. Yeah, he's a bit on the skittish side. Let's see if the girl is uh, ready for another. Would you like another, huh? Hmm? Yes, thank you. There we go. Here, I'll take that for a second and do Bothrop scan. There we go. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wear you out. I know that was pretty abrupt. It's that big eye is watching me again. These guys have super long fangs. Folded, it's probably half the distance between the rear of the eye and uh, the jawbone. You know, the Bothrops have a more dagger-like Fang. It's straighter. It's it's long, whereas the gaboons uh, have a much longer fang. But theirs is more of a scimitar uh, uh, shape. You know, if I wonder if if you had a collection of fangs from all different uh, venomous species. Um, whether or not you know you could make comparisons and identify unknown fangs that's always been something I've wondered uh, sort of comparative fangology <laughs> well you know we do comparative anatomy comparing different the same structures from different species and stuff uh, you know, that's what my friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Dennis Parmalee, and at uh, uh, Georgia Southern University or wherever Georgia Institute he's at, he uses uh, bones of modern day snakes to compare to snake bones uh, fossils that he goes out and finds at, uh, at different uh, locations around the country and world. Uh, and uses those as comparison and in hopes to sort of draw conclusions of you know what snake family those particular bones came from. Ah, oh stop that. So uh, it's pretty cool and certainly you might be able to uh, identify um, those sort of things from fangs but Unless you had a, an extensive collection of fangs, it would be uh, not so easy. How are you making out there, buddy? Up, oh, you just retreated, but we'll leave that uh, there. And uh, now let's see what our little Bothrops or Nettie. Yeah, that's typical for that snake. It will just strike and release. Uh, beautiful little snake, huh? We'll uh, go down a very rare uh, Bothrop species here in the U.S. Uh, it comes from the coastal plains of Peru in a semi-arid region. I'm particularly fond of the little white triangles bordering those uh, brown triangles. It really makes them stand out and just very, very nice.
There you go, bud. Yeah, I must caution everybody that uh, uh, watering f snakes from a squeeze bottle is a definite way of getting them hydrated, but it also increases your possibility of getting bit. Uh, really, really know your animal and how close uh, they can tolerate you uh, getting uh, without trying to kill you. Uh, I'll do this, you know, um, it's sort of a trust building thing. Um, you know, they will trust you to a great extent, but mm, there is a limit. Um, it takes time and uh, you start by sh shooting the water across the cage and then you slowly uh, work to the point where, uh, where you can get the nozzle close like I did. Uh, and sometimes they're in the mood, sometimes they're not. But, you know, you definitely increase your chances of getting bit. Certainly, pit vipers are a lot more dangerous uh, to do this with because they have uh, uh, the thermal imaging that they possess and uh, uh, that increases your chance of uh, getting bit. Oh, we're going to do slinky cam. Hey, how you doing, bud? Yeah. Well, now Slinky's uh, investigating the camera and tasting all the fine taste that it has. Hi, how you doing? No, you can't come out because Elvis is out right now. Elvis is out right now. You can't come out. Yeah, my fingers are right there. So please stay away from them. Thank you. Yeah, that's you, bud. That's you. No, I know you want to climb over the top of the camera. Please don't. Thank you. So... You know, Slinky's been with me for a while, but Slinky does have his, uh, his moments that um, he's really, really difficult to work with. And, you know, he's very intent on, uh, on coming out of the cage sometimes, and, and that is coupled with, I don't want to go back in the cage. And, you know, I understand that. Um, so I pick and choose uh, when Slinky... Can, can come out and visit. Uh, certainly with Elvis out and about in the room, um, Slinky can't possibly come out. Uh, one, uh, one deadly serpent out at a time. Okay. Go on back in, Slink. Go ahead. Come on. No, we're not coming out. I know I see the tongue flick. Come on. Put your head back in. Go ahead. I know. Now go pout. Slinky knows when he sees a hook. okay for him to proceed uh, uh, for a walkabout. Careful, it's not anchored, so don't don't put too much lateral force on it, bud. You'll uh, end up on the floor freaked out. Well, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, we got another hook. There you go. No? Me rolling around spooky, bud?
his cage really needs to be cleaned, so it will be very helpful if he goes over there. And uh, uh, that only leaves the female. Um, I can probably clean the uh, cage with her up in the, the tree there. I don't know if you folks can see her, but she's way up top of the, in the tree. Um, as long as she stays there, if not, I'll drop her in the bucket. Slinky, uh, hopefully, will go up into there and just chill. Well, actually, it's got a heating element, so he can actually uh, warm up. So it's been a while since Slink has been out. Slinky is very used to uh, using bridges made from hooks uh, to get from place to place. Uh, he's also going to stop and investigate. Hi, it's just me. You're okay. It's just me. Hello. Hello, carry on. You're okay. Here, see? You're okay. There you go. See, the snakes, as long as you let them investigate what's, you know, what's new in their environment, including yourself, uh, they're a lot more relaxed and don't see things as a threat. Just like you saw him freeze when he, I moved closer with the camera, but once I introduced the camera to him and he tongue flicked it and he realized that it was no threat he was good with that and just uh, kept on his way You're okay. You're okay. Go ahead. Now, for those of you of interest, what are you doing? Huh? You're backing up and you're causing this whole rig to slide. There's the remainder. Easy sink. Easy to. Yep. Freak out time. Okay. You're okay. Alright. Easy slink. Come on. No, no, no. Boy, Slinky, you put on weight. There you go. There you go. Alright. What happened, dude? Huh? You got all all freaked out. Okay. Well, it took a little bit of time to get this uh, baby hatchling boom slang to take a frozen thawed gecko, but I finally got her to do that. Uh, what was the key? You, you won't believe me if I told you. She absolutely wouldn't tongue flick for the longest time. And once she tongue flicked and it hit the back of the gecko, it was like, whoa, wait a minute, what's this, huh? Yeah, is that tasty? Huh? You gotta be careful not to freak her out or anything, but... Uh, this is a damn good start. Is your big fang stuck in its head? Huh? A little tough to maneuver with those big fangs at the back. These are absolutely adorable, very deadly little toxic worms. You know, and it's unfortunate that She's going to probably lose, well, she'll certainly lose her baby colors, but 
will probably turn black like all the rest. There you go. That's right. Now, folks, if you hear a crashing in the background, it just means that Elvis is destroying the place as he's tried all afternoon. He's out and about. Um, Elvis is generally not a bother when there's no food present. He'll just sort of hang out and, uh, and pretend I'm not here. You can see her beautiful uh, baby colors. And she now devours the gecko. Now I have a, a young male over in the other cage that I'm gonna feed next. And they've got these lovely green eyes. Come on. Take it up into your cage. Come on, don't get it caught in there. Whoops! Damn, I pulled the fat, fatty part of the tail off. There you go. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me see if I can get it to go down sort of after the fact. It's part of a, a trailer. Well, I think she's uh, going to be in a position where that's not going to happen. Once I get her fully uh, adjusted to feeding on frozen thawed geckos, I'll start scenting pinks and giving her pinks. Look at that. Uh, that's her warning colors. You can't see that blue unless she inflates her neck or she's eating like she is now. But holy cow, is she a gorgeous snake. But when you see that, watch out because she's going to bite you. I'm not certain and it looks unlikely that I'll get the opportunity to stick the tail in and let it follow the gecko to its uh, final resting place. Nope. I'm not going to bother her. I want her to relax and digest. I got the bulk of the gecko to go down with little little trouble. Uh, so we'll, we'll put that on the scorecard as a win and let her relax and not uh, harass her uh, anymore today.